بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد brothers and sisters in Islam السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Mercy for mankind is our prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم There's so much to learn about him even if we spend our entire lives reading his biography, reading his sunnah, we would not be able to reach all edges of it. It's an endless sea. It's an endless ocean that is filled with goods, favors, and blessings of Allah Azza wa Jal. It needs a good diver to dive in and extract the pearls and jewels underneath. Today, I will begin to study with you a milestone in the history of Islam. One would say, are you going to take talk about Badr or Uhud? Are you going to talk about the migration from Mecca to Medina? Actually, I'm going to talk about an event that took place on the fifth year of Hijrah, and that is the Battle of Al Khandaq, known as the Battle of the Trench, also known as the Battle of Al Ahzab. So, why pick such an incident? Firstly, because Allah Azza wa Jal revealed the Surah. Surah Al-Ahzab regarding this battle and it's called after it. Second of all, after this battle was over, the Prophet ﷺ highlighted this great milestone by saying, today we invade them and they do not invade us. Meaning that the idol worshippers of Quraysh, they will not be able to invade the Muslims in Medina. And the tables have been turned over them. And this was a prophecy that Allah Azza wa Jal has fulfilled to his Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What is the origin of this great battle? Now we know the hatred and enmity of the disbelievers to the religion of Islam and specifically to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the prophet of Islam, the messenger of Allah azza wa jal. And among those who hated him and his religion most were the Jews. The origin of this battle who ignited the fires were the Jews and throughout time and quote me if you wish but I'm not being racist I'm not being anti-semitists because the Jews and the Muslims originally are cousins the Jews are the descendants of Isaac the son of Ibrahim while the Muslims are the descendants of Ismail, the son of Ibrahim. So actually, they are cousins. It's not something racial about them. However, if you read throughout the history, you will always see the fingerprints of the Jews in all catastrophes, calamities, problems worldwide. It's hidden, but it's there. And in the Quran, Allah Azza wa Jal described them in a way as if we can see them. Their treachery, their deceit, their constant lying all the time. 
just hear any declaration of an Israeli politician and you will find that lies flies out of his mouth and they're not ashamed of that they tell you that this is who we are and this is what we do best they are arrogant and look at everyone else as their own mules and donkeys to use for riding when the Prophet ﷺ came to Medina there were three prominent tribes of the Jews living in Medina there was Banu Qaynuqa there was Banu Nadir and there was Banu Quraidha and about 80 miles north of Medina there was another village known as Khaybar which was inhabited by Jews but we're focusing on the Jews who were living among the Arabs who were living among the Muslims in Medina and the reason the Jews have this personal vendetta against the Muslims and the Messenger of Allah Azza wa Jal, specifically at the time of Medina historian tells us historians tell us that the Jews used to have a feud used to have skirmishes and small fights with the Arabs inhabiting Medina and they would threaten them and tell them that this is the era this is the time when Allah would send a messenger and we will fight under his flag and we will annihil annihilate you all and we will kill you all so they were anticipating this and when the Prophet ﷺ came and was given the message they were disappointed because they were hoping that he was a Jew which he wasn't وسلم, he was an Arab so they expressed their enmity and they went out of the way they went overboard because their hatred their envy as Allah described in the Quran made them hate Muhammad وسلم, and anything that he says Ibn Ishaq in his beautiful seerah reported that mother Safiya and we know that Safiya is the wife of the Prophet ﷺ. but before he married her she was a Jew and she was the daughter of Huyay ibn Akhtab one of the prominent leaders of Bani Nubair so she tells us that I was the most beloved child to my father and to my uncle Abu Yasir and they would not favor any boy or girl over me whenever they see me they would leave their offspring and embrace me and kiss me because I was their beloved child when the Prophet came وسلم, to Medina she says and he was announced to stay in Quba my father and uncle went to see him early morning and they took their time they came at the end of the day just before sunset and they were dragging their feet they were lazy they were depressed so I went to them to greet them as I usually do expecting them to embrace me to kiss me etc but they did not even pay any attention to me and they did not look at me because they were so depressed she says I heard my uncle Abu Yasir say to my father is he the one is he the man and my father said by Allah he is the man so Abu Yasir said do you know him do you recognize him you're sure about that you can describe him and my father said yes so my uncle said to him okay then what are we going to do about him meaning should we follow him should we fight him what do you advise so my father said by Allah I will exchange enmity with him 
as long as I live. And this is envy. This is pure rage and hatred to the Prophet ﷺ. Though the Prophet ﷺ did not do anything to them. So this is how it started. Now when we say that the enmity of the Jews to Islam and the Muslims, not that all of them are enemies of Islam. There are among the Jews those who are peaceful, those who are kind and loving to other nations. And Islam has, as they say, has no beef with them. And Islam tells us to be kind to them. Some of them even go the extra mile. And they are people of reason and intellect. They see what's right and they follow it. It was reported that Abdullah ibn Salam, may Allah be pleased with him, and he was one of their great scholars and rabbis. He said, when I heard about the coming of the Prophet والسلام, and people talk about him, I said to myself, let me go and see this man. So he went and he said, the minute I saw his face, I recognize that he, this is not the face of a liar. Now look at his objectivity. He's going there to check the man, but he doesn't have any hidden agendas. He's going there as a seeker of truth. In his scriptures, there is a prophecy of a man coming to be the seal of the prophets. In his scriptures, there is a description of a man coming similar to Musa, uh, being an orphan, being raised in hardship, being uh, um, migrating from one uh, place to the other. So he just went there to listen to him. So he recognized the face of the Prophet ﷺ is not the face of a liar. Then the first thing he heard were words of wisdom. When the Prophet said, ﷺ, ya ayyuhan nas, Oh people, spread the word of peace. And this is the greetings of the Muslims. Assalamu alaikum, peace be upon you. And feed the food to the needy and the hungry. And pray at night when the people are asleep and you shall enter the paradise of Allah Azza wa Jal in peace. So Abdullah ibn Salam, when he came and asked the Prophet والسلام, and the Prophet answered his questions, he was convinced. He said, these questions, no one can answer them except a Prophet of Allah. And I believe that you are the Prophet of Allah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh. He became Muslim on the spot, a rabbi, a scholar. However, he was smart. He said, O Prophet of Allah, if the Jews hear about my revers reversion and conversion to Islam, they will most likely slander me and say bad things about me. However, I would request that you call them, summon them, and ask them about me, and then tell them about my acceptance to Islam. So he hid behind the curtain. And the Prophet ﷺ called the scholars and the rabbis of the Jews. And he asked them, how is Abdullah ibn Salam among you? How do you rate him? So they said to him, he is the most knowledgeable among us. And his father was the most knowledgeable among us. And he is the best of us as his father was the best of our generation. So the Prophet والسلام, said to them, what would you do if you come to learn that Abdullah ibn Salam has accepted Islam and embraced it? And they said, we seek refuge in Allah from this. No, this cannot happen. And they repeated this twice or three times. So the Prophet والسلام, called Abdullah Ibn Salam to come out. And when he came out, he said to them, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah 
wa ashadu anna muhammadan rasulullah then they turned against him and said he is the most evil among us and the son of the most evil among us they changed their words they altered their statement because of hatred and their enmity and this is usual this is in the genes of the Jews this is their belief okay now when we say that this doesn't mean that there is a black sheep here and there this doesn't mean that there can be good people among the Jews who stand with the truth and defend it this is found but it is very rare like red mercury we see them defending the rights of the Palestinians and standing in the face of the oppression of the Zionists and the Israeli armies we see those but they're very little they're very few and we have to stand by them and we had to have to congratulate them and show them our support to them but in general the hatred of the Jews was not only to the Prophet ﷺ. They know this. It was to their own messengers and prophets, as Allah describes in the Quran, that the so many messengers and prophets sent to them, they either accused them of lying or they would kill them and slaughter them. Their own prophets and messengers, they have no problem in killing them. They have no problem in assassinating them. And this is the role model of today's Jews and Israelis. Assassinations, they're good at it because it's based on deceit and lies. They tried to kill the Prophet ﷺ a number of times. The confirmed are two. And one is found in the books of history and that was even when he was a child giving to Halima sallallahu alaihi wasallam to suckle him and breastfeed him and when she met the Jews and asked them about this these wonders about this boy and the miracles that Allah azza wa has shown her through him they asked, is he an orphan? And she was afraid to tell them the truth. So she said, no, I'm his mother and this man is his father. And they told her, had he been an orphan, we would have killed him. Because this is the, the prophet and the messenger who would come at the end of time. And they tried to kill the prophet ﷺ in two other incidents, Banu Nadir, tried to kill him once and also in Khaybar when they gave the Prophet ﷺ a sheep that was filled with poison to eat from. So this is history and we can see it. Open the news, look and read between the lines and you will see the fingerprints of the Jews everywhere in calamities, in wars, in chaos. Even in the financial crisis, who runs finance throughout the world? Who controls banks and financial institutions? Who controls the media? What is the main cause of brainwashing people's minds through the media, through the, the violence in the movies, through the lyrics in the songs, through the articles in magazines and newspapers? It's the Jews. They're good planners and they work hard. But th the thing that they did not figure out was that it is Allah Azza wa that they're fighting. And they have no ability and no one has the ability to fight Allah the Almighty. And they will be defeated without any doubt. And the Muslims would kill them at the end of the time. Though Islam is not a religion of violence, but it's not a religion of weakness. At the, end of the at the end of time, the Jews will collaborate with the Antichrist, known to us as al-Masih al-Dajjal, 
the imposter. There will be 70,000 of them, and they will originate from Asbahan in nowadays Iran. And this shows you the great collaboration between the Jews and the Persians, the fire worshippers, or those who claim to be Muslims among the Rafidah, who bluntly say that the Quran is distorted, who curse all the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. These are not Muslims, of course. It shows you the collaboration because the Dajjal would originate from there and 70,000 of the Jews of Asbahan would accompany him. At the end of time, this is when they will hide behind trees and rocks and Allah would make the trees and rocks talk to the Muslims and say, O Muslim, O servant of Allah, behind me is a Jew, come and kill him. So this is a specific incident that will happen and take place at the end of time. Not that Islam is a violent religion. We coexist with the Jews. The Jews never had a safe haven, never had a safe place to live in except under the Islamic laws. They've been living in Arabia, in Morocco, in Egypt, in Iraq, in Syria, all over the place, in peace for centuries. However, look how the Muslims are being treated whenever the Jews are in control. 70 years, they came to Palestine as guests. The Muslims, the Palestinians opened their doors to them. What did they do? They kicked them out, unlocked the door, and now they're treating them as invaders and they're treating the, the Muslims, the Arabs, the, the, the original owners of, of the land, they're treating them as in, uh, people who are coming from abroad and trying to take their own land. And they chant and sing, this land is mine, God give this land to me. Who said it's yours? It's like the Red Indians overthrowing the American government and annihilating the people because this is their land. Well, actually, maybe this is why the U.S. government supports Israel, because they feel that they are, there's chemistry among them. They're all invaders, and they're all aggressors, transgressors, and they're all killers. It's not their land, and it's the land of the Muslims, where all would find peace and tranquility and fairness. This was their way of spreading chaos since the beginning of time, controlling the financing. They're the best people to deal with usury, with riba, interest-based. So all financial institutions, all bankings are run by them since the beginning of time. Shalok in the Merchant of Venice was a Jew. So this is not something that we came up with. This is history. And they spread their seeds of fitna, of distributing or distracting or dividing the people. This is what they do best. In the books of history, the Tabari reported in his tafsir that Shas ibn Qais, the Jew, and he was one of the Jews who hated Islam most. And he had this real grudge against the Muslims. It was reported that he once passed by the Ansar. And we know that the Ansar were made of two big tribes, Al-Aws and Al-Khazraj. And there was a hundred years old feud between these two tribes of the same city of Medina. And when the Prophet came, alayhi salatu wasalam, and they accepted Islam, they all became as one. They all became brothers. So he passed, Shas ibn Qais, passed by them, and they were gathering and laughing and talking as brothers. And he could not bear this. So he went back to his tribe, and he asked one of his slaves, one of his servants, to go there and to say poetry. And Arabs love poetry. 
but to say the poetry that would provoke their feelings of a vengeance and revenge and remind them of the words they had. So the boy went there and he started saying poetry. And each side, their blood started to boil. They remembered their ancestors, they remembered their uncles, their fathers who died, who perished, who were assassinated, who were killed in such battles. And before long, they started to fight with one another. Shaitan overwhelmed them, came to take control. So they felt that it's time to avenge one another. And they started to feud and they almost got physical with the swords. And only at that time the Prophet ﷺ heard of it. So he went out with the Muhajireen, with the migrants from Quraysh. And he stood there and shouted at them, are you calling with the slogans and calls of the pre-Islamic era of Jahiliyyah, while I am among you, Allah Azza wa Jal has honored you with Islam. Allah the Almighty has cut off you, the issues of ignorance, and Allah Azza wa Jal had made you to become brethren. The people immediately realized that this was from shaitan. So they threw their arms, they embraced one another, hugged one another, and started to cry, apologizing from one another. And that day, Allah Azza wa Jal revealed in Shas ibn Qais the ayah saying, say, O people of the scriptures, Jews and Christians, why do you stop those who have believed from the path of Allah, seeking to me make it seem crooked, while you yourselves are witnesses to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi the messenger of Allah and Islam, the religion of Allah, that is to worship one but him alone. And Allah is not unaware of what you do. So this was a warning to Shas and those who were with him that why are you doing this? What is it that you hate about Islam most? Is it because they call for the oneness of Allah and not to worship any other? Is it because Islam prohibits intoxications, fornications, using, uh, 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 dealing with usury and riba, being bad to your parents, severing your kinship? W what is it that you hate about Islam? And if you have an iota of logic, you would discover that Islam is a great religion and that all the negative things that may seem to you, you negative, you will find that these minute things are overwhelmed by the greatness, the advantages, and the beautiful things in Islam. We have a short break. Stay tuned, and we'll be right back. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back. The lines are open for your questions if you have any. Uh, we have a question from Ruqayya. She says that, is it true that if a mother feeds her child even after the period of two years is over, then every drop of milk that a child drinks is haram? This is baseless, to, totally um, a, a big blatant lie. There's nothing like this. The scholars have differed whether it is permissible for a woman to exceed the period of two years in suckling the child or not. Because after two years, now the child is capable of eating and should not drink anymore. And this was the period given in the Quran. But there's nothing in Islam that prohibits it. So some scholars say that she could go on to three years and some say that she could go on for four years. But this is not natural. This is not normal. Therefore, uh, maybe the scholars who said that two and a half years is the max would be the right thing to do. Nevertheless, one should not be hooked to such an addiction, which is an addiction to the mother more than the child, because the mother is so attached to her child, she doesn't want to 
uh, uh, sort of kick the habit. Anyhow, this uh, uh, should not be prolonged for too long and the child should learn how to uh, eat normal food and Allah knows best. Uh, Sarah says, I have been afflicted by the evil eye for three years now. I am doing ruqya on myself. My question is, will the healing take longer because I have had it so long? The issue of ruqya definitely is one of the greatest means of healing in Islam. And ruqya is a number of verses of the Quran or prophetic hadiths or supplications and invocations to Allah Azza wa Jal recited over someone who is ill, whether physically or mentally, whether something that is tangible and we can see and touch, or whether it is something that is mental, such as the evil eye, such as the possession of jinn, black magic, envy, etc. And this was directed to us by the Prophet ﷺ, when he said, whoever is capable of benefiting his brother, meaning through ruqya, he should do so. And the Prophet also instructed وسلم, the Muslims to give ruqya when he saw a child with a change in his face. And he asked them to give ruqya to him. So evil eye is there. And evil eye is different than envy because evil eye is ignited when someone sees something he likes. And this person can be righteous and can be a good person, but subhanAllah, he did not say, may Allah bless, he did not uh, make dua. So his, he ignited this and it went straight through. So the best thing for a person who gave an evil eye to clear the patient from his harm is to perform wudu and to wash the inside of your garment and then the water will be collected and thrown over the patient from behind and he will be as good as new. If this is not possible, then we have to do ruqya. And ruqya may work in a week. It may take longer. It depends on how strong your conviction is, how strong your belief in Allah is, and how good the ruqya was done. So if you believe in Allah Azza wa Jal and you recite the ruqya over zamzam water and you wash yourself with zamzam and drink of that and you trust Allah 100%, you will be cured inshaAllah. How long will it take? It doesn't matter. As long as you believe in Allah Azza wa Jal. We know that Prophet Ayyub, peace be upon him, was sick for 17 years and he was a prophet. And then after 17 or 18 years, Allah healed him and cured him. So this is Allah's test for you. You have to be patient, you have to be tolerant, and you have to be a believer. And with the grace of Allah, Allah would cure you. Uh, Basira from Saudi. Salam alaykum, Sheikh. Salam to Allah. Please, I'm actually on, the, on behalf of a sister. She said, I want to know, I, they, she's staying with her husband. They have, uh, she's staying with her husband. They are not married. They have two children. They plan to get married. But unfortunately, the, uh, the husband died before they got married. So she wants to know, will she stay a month for the precise four months and ten days? They were not married at all? Yeah, they were not. They had the intention of getting married, but okay. they were not married. Any more questions? Yes. I want to ask, I always pray my tarawi at home. I don't go to mosque. And I always like, is he rewarding than... You as you are going to the mosque. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. You're quite, quite welcome. Salman? Hello. Yes, Salman from Pakistan. I, yes. I had two questions. Yes, sir. First, I wanted to, you know, ask you something. It was in documents in Wikileaks that said lots of networks in, you know, Islamic states and countries have been paid off by Saudi government and your network's name was in that list. It says that you have been paid $12,000 in year 2012 by Saudi government, not to say anything against them. My, na my name? I was, I was... Your network's name. My name? Okay, not your personal name. 
your network's name. What's my network it's name? It's not your name. It's Hoda TV. All right? Okay. And lots of other channels. I wanted to see if it is true. And secondly, there was a caller yesterday. And in answer to his question, you said that Saudis are not killing people in Yemen, but Houthis are. Okay. Okay, I think the brother was cut off. Very uh, expected, but um, Tel Aviv. Okay, Basira says that she has a woman had two children from an illegal uh, relationship. They intended to get married, and then the man died. So does she wait the idda period? The answer is no. She is a fornicator. She is an adulteress. She was living in a prohibited relationship with this man. And she and him were in a major sin. So definitely she has no idda because the idda is to honor the husband who died by staying in mourning for four months and ten days. And she was not uh, uh, like that. So uh, the answer is no. She has no idda because of his death. Muhammad from Africa. Assalamu alaikum, Shaykh. Assalamu uh, Quick question for you. I'd like you to clarify for the five Salah prayers, what are the actual breakdown? What is Sunnah, what is Farad, what is Nafil that should be done as a normal thing every day? Okay. Shukran. You're quite welcome, Akhi. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu The second question of Basira was, uh, if she prays Taraweeh in the house, is this permissible? The answer is, this is recommended, not permissible. The women are encouraged and recommended to pray at home, as the Prophet said, والسلام, and their reward by praying at home is more than their reward by praying uh, in the masjid. Salman from Pakistan, like our brother, uh, I don't know what's his name, Jabir or something from Afghanistan yesterday, again raised the issue of Saudi Arabia, and he says that he read in WikiLeaks that Saudi uh, government paid uh, uh, agencies, and one of them, our network. I think he meant, uh, 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 what's it called, uh, Huda TV. They paid them in 2012, $12,000. $12,000, this is my monthly salary. What are you talking about? What is this? This is peanuts. It's not even uh, 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 money enough for one minute advertisement in a, a respected uh, TV. And he says that how authentic is this Achy, I, again what is it that you guys have against Saudi Arabia is it the hatred in your hearts because they live a good life and they have a good income and they spread Islam worldwide and they have the biggest print house of Quran and they serve Mecca and Medina and they give scholarships to students from all over the world and because education for the citizens and the non-citizens are free so is the medical care is it because they produce the greatest and highest amount of scholars in the world spreading the manhaj of Ahl sunnah and Jama'ah most likely yes this is the only reason I can find for you to have such a grudge. You say things against them that you don't say against America or against the Jews. Israel, no, no one called complaining about what the Jews are doing in Israel. So it shows that these people are delusional. They have their hidden agenda. And look at their source of information, Wikipedia or WikiLeaks or WikiWackos. What is this? Are you a Muslim? And you, if someone publishes in WikiLeaks that, uh, what's his name, Salman's father was a, a, a Jew from uh, Asbahan. Would I take this for granted? Allah says in Surah Al-Hujurat, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu in ja'akum fasiqum binabain fatabayinu. Whenever someone who is immorally practicing, someone who is a sinner, someone who is not reliable, brings you with a piece of information, make sure and authenticate it. And all what you're doing is slandering a whole country that defends Islam and the Muslims and helps to spread the word of Allah Azza wa Jal by an article in WikiLeaks. Akhi, have some sense in you. But again, coming to his second remarks about the Houthis. Ya Akhi, before the strikes began, what were the Houthis doing? 
What did they do to the legitimate uh, 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 government? What did they do to the Sunnis? What did they do in Damaj, killing all the Salafis and bombarding their villages? What they, did they do to the scholars of Islam, the Muslims in Yemen, taking everything into their control and opening a back door to the Iranians to come and control it? Again, it's the same uh, um, propaganda being paid for by the Iranians, being used by those uh, uh, people. May Allah Azza wa Jal guide them. Uh, Muhammad from Africa. Uh, okay, before Muhammad, uh, Tulmira from the Emirates. Yes. <coughs> yes, what can I do for you? Assalamu uh, alaikum, Sheikh. Assalamualaikum. Uh, Ramadan Mubarak. And same to Zakallah Khair. Yeah, please. I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a married, and uh, uh, I'm a married, and we we are alhamdulillah we are Muslim, happy family. But my husband, this is the first time he's dreaming in his dreams that we are getting divorced. So I want to ask, what does that mean? Okay. So what we have to think about that? Okay, I will answer your question, inshallah. Please, please. Thank you very much. You're quite welcome. Ahmed from Afghanistan. Assalamu alaikum, ya Sheikh. Wa alaikum assalam, hala chituri. Happy month of Ramadan to all Muslims, Sheikh. Thank you very much for this very helpful program. Zakallah khair. Yeah, thank you so much. I'm a university student. I study Islam very closely. Sheikh, I was just watching your program from the very beginning. You pointed out points about Jews. I think you're so right about them. Uh, Jews are playing this devil act in this world that is just uh, vilifying Islam and, you know, bringing it to denigration. And Hello? Ahmed? Uh, apparently, Ahmed is gone. I hope he calls again with his question. Islam from Saudi? Yes, Islam. Mute your t TV and listen to me from the phone, please. Okay. Hello. Yes, Akhi. Yeah, you got, you got my question? No, I did not hear your question, Akhi. I said that uh, I want to know if one is fasting during the month of Ramadan. If one fasts? Well, one is doing fasting during the month of Ramadan. I'm unable to understand your question, uh, Islam. Mute your TV, Akhi. Shut your TV down. When you are doing fasting, doing Ramadan. Okay. Okay, okay, one minute. Hello? Yes. Hello? Yes, Akhi, what is your question? Yeah, I, I want to know if you are fasting during the month of Ramadan. Okay. Uh, you don't you don't have you don't with your family, you're not living with your family and you are living alone. Okay. And you have sisters that are living in the house with you. Is 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 best for them to cook food for you to eat? Who's cooking food for you? Some sisters like maybe people or sisters that you live with from the same country, you don't know them. I will answer your question, inshallah. Ahmed from Afghanistan. Sheikh, uh, I, I was just speaking, and I think this is because of the poor uh, connection. So, Sheikh, I wanted to say that in the month of Ramadan, actually, uh, I saw many Muslims being happy and many of them being angry about what's going on in the region. Basically, I read about Ayatollah, and I believe that its emergence has a, has a background related to Salafism and, you know, Wahhabis in the, in the in Islam and the Muslim world, as the as the Wahhabi brand of Islam was brought by Hillary Clinton to the region because it wanted to destroy and you know vilify real Islam. I know what how these groups are formed. I saw so clearly know everything about this. As you said, as you said, these are the kawarij of Zama. We shouldn't allow them to live any longer. We need to be, bring real force in this. Okay, I got I got your message, Ahmed, and I will inshallah try to uh, speak in a way. About it. Are she from uh, Saudi? Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Assalamu alaikum. Ramadan Mubarak, Sheikh. And to you as well. Zakallah khair.
uh, my question is about uh, tahajjud prayer okay. uh, like i read uh, in books uh, with reference to sahih bukhari as well that uh, prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to take a short nap or maybe sleep and then used to get up for tahajjud salah but uh, sometimes uh, what i notice in my routine that i'm not sleeping in the night either i'm doing my household chores or uh, some reading or some of my college work and uh, then i want to offer tahajjud salah so can i do it i mean without sleeping in the night okay i will answer it. Uh, i will yeah, answer it so much. you're quite welcome ahmed khan assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh uh, i have two questions uh initially i want to ask if, uh, if as nowadays if i have sold land uh, worth 10 million to someone and he has paid me 2 million and then he declines and he is not able to pay the rest of the money so should i return the money back because according to the laws uh, i mean the land laws which are followed in this worldly affair we are not supposed to pay the money back but what is it in islam okay second and second is uh, i have a cousin he married a girl and then he divorced her but di he divorced her without consuming the marriage now he wants to remarry the girl so is he going to do it after the halala thing or he can remarry the girl okay i will answer you inshallah Thank uh, you. Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah. Asya from Saudi. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Sampla barakatu. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh, for this beautiful program. Jazakallah. Mashallah, we are getting a lot of knowledge. Alhamdulillah, authentic knowledge. All the past companion knowledge, what we are supposed to get it. Alhamdulillah, we are getting at home. May Allah bless you. May Allah bless this country. Amen. Who is, who is allowing this to to transmit all, to all over the world. May Allah give jaza to this country, to this channel, and to you, Sheikh. Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah khair. No questions? Okay, I think no questions. We have nine minutes, so I think we will stop taking questions so I can answer the questions at hand. Uh, Muhammad from Africa says, can you tell me about the prayers? What are the five daily prayers? There are the mandatory five daily prayers, two rak'ahs of Fajr, four rak'ahs of Dhuhr, four rak'ahs of Asr, four rak uh, three rak'ahs of Maghrib, and four rak'ahs of Isha. These are, these are 17 mandatory, they are fard, they are obligatory. Now, the highly recommended sunnah are 12 in number, and they're distributed as follows. Two before Fajr, four before Dhuhr, two after Dhuhr, two after Maghrib, and two after Isha. These are 12. Whoever observes them every single day and night, Allah would build him a house in Jannah. Is it a house for every day, or is it a house for the entire lifespan? Allah Azza wa is most generous. Don't feel being deprived of any good from Allah Azza wa The Nafil prayers, the door is open. So if you add two to the existing two after Dhuhr, so that makes it four. And if you add four before Dhuhr, uh, Asr time, so this is also permissible. And of course, you have the Witr, which is highly recommended, and you have night prayer as well. Uh, Tlimara from the Emirates, she says that she's married, happily married with her husband, and has, her husband has been getting these dreams of divorce. So what is this? I don't do dreams uh, um, interpretation. I don't have knowledge in it, uh, um, simple as that. But I know one thing. It's either two things. Either your husband is eating too much before going to bed, so it's causing him these nightmares, and this is probable. Or this is his subconscious, because you're nagging and you are dealing with him unfairly and you're not being kind to his uh, parents, so his subconscious is creating these. The third option, which is always there, this is shaitan. So he should, when he wake up, seek refuge in Allah from the shaitan. A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajeem, a'udhu billahi min shaitan rajeem, a'udhu billahi min shaitan rajeem. And dry spit three times to his left, uh, uh, providing that you're not on his left. So this is what is recommended in Allah knows best. Ahmed from Afghanistan, as usual, a good introduction uh, from these countries. And then they start to uh, fire at whatever they think is right and I beg to differ he claims that Salafi and Wahhabi 
is a byproduct of Harry Clinton, and this is so pathetic and, and, and so illogical for someone to claim that something that had been here for three centuries was the byproduct of uh, uh, someone like that and a, a disbeliever. Salafiyah and Wahhabiyya, if there is anything as Wahhabiyya, there isn't anything. Nobody around says, I'm a Wahhabi or something, except to laugh about uh, over people. But it is Salafiyya, it is Ahl Sunnah al Jama'ah, it is Ahl Hadith. It is the th same methodology, the same manhaj, the same aqeedah that the Prophet was uh, uh, embracing and conveying to his companions and the Ummah. So those who attack it, they do this out of their ignorance. Or they do this out of their extreme love to their deviant sects, Sh uh, Sufism, Shia, uh, uh, Ismaili, Qadri, uh, Baha'i, um, etc. You name it, there are 73 of them, the Prophet said, all in hell except one. This is what the Prophet said, my Ummah would divide into 73 sects or cults. All of them are in hell except one. Which one is it? Those who are following my footsteps. And no one can claim that he is following the footsteps of the Prophet ﷺ in terms of aqaid, in aqidah, or in terms of fiqh, or in terms of uh, um, moral conduct, or in any, any aspect, no one can claim this except the Salafis. Except those who abide by the Quran and the Sunnah, they cleanse to them with the understanding of the righteous predecessors. No matter what you are, or f where, are you, where you are from, if you don't have this methodology, then you're not part of Ahl Sunnah and Jama'ah because you're following Tom, Dick, or Harry. We follow the Prophet. We follow his companions. We follow the Tabi'een. We follow their understanding because they understood the Quran more than we did and they took it straight from the Prophet's mouth. So claiming that these Khawarij, these ISIS affiliated, Daesh, these uh, terrorist, e extremist, fundamentalist, fanatics, you call them whatever you want. To be originally Salafis or Wahhabis, I tell you, definitely not. The principles among all Salafis is the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, who says that whoever kills a disbeliever who has a covenant, so any Christian, Jew, or anyone who's a disbeliever, there's a covenant between him and our government, and he's residing in our homes, in our countries, Whoever kills this disbeliever, this infidel, this kafir, whoever kills him will not find the scent of Jannah, will not enter paradise. This is what Salafis believe. Now you compare us to these people who kill not only disbelievers, they kill the Muslims. They burn them alive. They drown them alive. Do you believe in this? This has nothing to do with Islam. They are professionals in extracting women from their wife, from their husbands, from taking children from their fathers. And they are taking them all of, uh, to, to Syria or to Iraq and making them give takfir to their husbands and their fatwa is ready to make their marriage void and they remarry someone else. So they are fornicators, they're adulteresses. These are committing the act of zina, but they have a ready-made fatwa. By who? By Abu X, Y, Z. You don't know their names. You don't know their tribes. You don't know their uh, uh, scholars. So, Akhi, I beg to differ. You have to be fair once in your life and study Salafiyyah and study the religion of the Prophet ﷺ as it was revealed. The religion that is embraced and the manhaj and methodology that is embraced by Sheikh bin Baz, Ibn Ithameen, by Sheikh Al-Albani, the great scholars of Islam, by Ibn Qayyim, by Ibn Taymiyyah, by Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, by Abu Hanifa, Malik, Shafi'i, all of them were Salafis, but you failed to see that. Islam from Saudi Arabia, his question was unclear and he made the same mistake of turning on his TV and I'm hearing the echoing. He's saying that he's living alone. He doesn't have anyone to cook for him. People send him food. Can he eat? The answer is yes, as long as you're in a Muslim country and you don't have any reason to doubt the food that, that they're sending you, you can eat that food without any problem. Arshi from Saudi Arabia, she says that she doesn't sleep at night. So when she prays, could this be counted? Could this be counted? Could this be counted as tahajjud? The answer is yes and no. See, tahajjud, is more rewarded than 
night prayer in general, though it is part of not night prayer, because it is preceded by sleeping. So you would fight yourself to wake up and pray. But if a put in it done, in this case, you can take him to court and demand the eight million back. Or he just gave you this as uh, a down payment and the transaction was not done. In this case, this is called arbun, down payment. And the majority of scholars say that if he did not conclude the uh, transaction and give you the rest of the money, the money is totally yours. And the uh, last question, someone divorced his wife before consummating the marriage and he wants to remarry again. If this was the first divorce, and actually it cannot be any other than the first divorce if he did not consummate the marriage, in this case, yes, he can marry her again, but he has one down, two divorces to go, and Allah Azza wa knows best. With this, we come to the conclusion of our episode for today. Meet you same time, same place, tomorrow, inshallah, where we will continue to speak about the plots of the Jews against the Prophet Asalam, which is an introduction to the Battle of the Trench. With this, I leave you fi amanillah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sous-titrage